to the first topic that is antepartum hemorrhage. What is meant by antepartum hemorrhage? Antepartum hemorrhage basically means hemorrhage is bleeding, bleeding from the genital tract that is happening after period of viability. If a patient has bleeding that is specifically happening after the period of viability, in India, an average that we take is 28 weeks. You know, viability is a very fluid term as such. It's basically that period of gestation beyond which the fetus has high chance for survival. Survival. Like in US, they take it as 20. 20 weeks. Like in UK, they take it as 24 weeks. In India, we have a situation where the resources are very, at least the average that we take is 28 weeks. So if we have bleeding from genital tract, the patient experiences bleeding from genital tract after the period of viability, it is taken as antepartum hemorrhage. The first type of question that come from this is all of the following are causes of antepartum hemorrhage except so let's go into the causes of antepartum hemorrhage, which is the most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage. The most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage is abruption, also known as accidental hemorrhage. What is meant by abruption? Abruption is a condition. See, in this, the placenta is separating from the placental bed. So this is a premature separation of a normally located placenta. So that is abruption. Abruption basically means premature separation of a normally located placenta. And this is the most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage. The second most common cause is placenta previa. When the placenta is occupying the lower uterine segment, as you can see in this image, the lower part of uterus, the lower uterine segment, that is known as placenta previa. We will be seeing the different types of placenta previa in a short while. Next, even placental anomalies can lead to antepartum hemorrhage. Anomalies like circumvallate type of placenta, circummarginate type of placenta. Many placental anomalies are associated with this antepartum hemorrhage. Even vasa previa. What is vasa previa? Vasa previa is a condition. We see that the baby's blood vessels or the fetal blood vessels are traversing over the internal os. If you look at this image, you have a uterus here and you see the baby's blood vessels. The fetal blood vessels are freely transversing over the internal os. That is vasa previa. What is the significance of this and all this? We are going to see in a short while. So first, let's just look at the different causes. The most common cause is abruption. Most common cause is abruption. What is abruption? Abruption is the premature separation of a normally located placenta. Premature separation of a normally located placenta. What is meant by placenta previa? Here it is normally located, but the separation is happening. What is placenta previa? It's not normally located. Placenta previa is the placenta that is located lower down, that is occupying the lower uterine segment. Placenta occupying the lower uterine segment. And this is the second most common cause of antepartum hemorrhage. The second most common cause is your placenta previa. Even placental anomalies can lead to this condition such as circumvallate placenta. Circumvallate placenta, circummarginate type of placenta. Vasa previa can lead to this. What is vasa previa? Vasa previa is a condition where the fetal blood vessels, fetal blood vessels are freely traversing over internal os. Over the internal os. 
even this could be due to local causes local causes such as a cervical polyp cervical erosion cervical cancer all these can even bleed during pregnancy and the patient can present with bleeding in the antenatal period so local causes remember anything cervical like cervical polyp cervical cancer all these can lead to antepartum hemorrhage. So first have a look at this. Sometimes they might ask you an all except question from this. So you should be aware of the various causes. If they ask you what is the most common cause, most common cause is abruption. Second most common cause is placenta previa. Let's just have a look at the same thing in the images as well. In the first image, you are seeing that placenta has separated and there is some blood that has collected behind. What is this suggestive of? This is suggestive of abruption. This is suggestive of abruption. Second image, you can see the placenta which is low down. This is your placenta previa. In the third image, you can appreciate the fetal blood vessels traversing over the internal os. This is vasa previa. Yes. So the main topics that we are going to discuss in this chapter are the most important or the most common causes of antipartum hemorrhage, including your placenta previa and abruption. So rather than discussing these topics completely, I like two different topics. It's always better if you compare and contrast. You will see that there are a lot of features which is drastically different between these two conditions. By comparing and contrasting, you can learn both of them together and it will help you to approach the MCQ questions much better. Like majority of the cases, they are going to give you the clinical features, the options you are going to get from these options, or they will give you one of the condition. They will ask you for the further management, the investigations. Let's compare, contrast, and learn these two conditions thoroughly. First, let's see the classification associated with placenta previa and abruption. Placenta previa classification is very important. This is the older classification. This is your brownies classification. Though it is the brownies, the older classification is the brownies classification, yet many a times this question do come. Sometimes they give you an image on this, ask you to identify what type of placenta previa is this, or they can give you a description to identify what type are we dealing about. So before continuing with the session, is the speed okay with the majority? Yes. Is it too fast? Is it too slow? Should I increase the speed by a bit 1.25x or decrease it? Yes. It's good. Okay. It's good. All fine. All proper. Okay. 1.3x. <laughs> Thank you, Kishi. Yes. It's fine. All right. Okay. Okay. So what are we are first dealing about? This brownies classification, very important. Have a note of this classification. In Brownie's classification, it is divided as grade 1 to grade 4. As you see, as we move from grade 1 to grade 4, the placenta is coming lower and lower down towards the internal os. So, what is grade 1? Grade 1 is the placenta previa which is just encroaching or approaching the lower segment of uterus. It is just there in the lower segment, that's all. It has not touched the internal os or anything. It has not reached the internal os. What is grade 2? Grade 2 is basically placenta previa that reaches the internal os. Can you appreciate in this image? This is the internal os. Os means opening. Cervix has two opening. The opening that it opens interiorly, that is internal os. The opening through which it opens externally, that is external os into the vagina, into the uterus into vagina. So this is the internal os. So here you see placenta is just reaching the internal os. Rather than learning like that, you can remember two touches the internal os. Two touches internal os so that you never forget. So basically grade two touches the internal os. What about grade three? Grade 3 will start covering the internal os, but it is partial covering. So, grade 3 partially covers the internal os. Grade 4 will be completely covering the internal os. Completely covering the internal os. So, grade 1 is approaching the lower uterine segment. 2 is 
touching the internal os. Grade 3 is basically partially covering the internal os. Grade 4 is completely covering the internal os. Among these images, have a special note of image 2 and 3. This is one point where I often see students making mistake. See, 2 and 3 might look similar, but it is different. 2 is only just touching. It has not covered the os. But see, in 3, this part, the os is slightly covered. How is it covered? Partially covered. So don't mistake 2 and 3. 2 will just touch the os, whereas 3 will partially cover the internal os. There are other names that we use to describe all these grades as well. Grade 1 is defined as or named.